Hey everyone, Path here. Now, one of the basic assumptions that the theories of both special relativity and general relativity make is that the speed of light is constant, the same, for all observers. If I were to measure the speed of light, it would end up being roughly 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, which we call c. But if a person were to drive past me, shining a flashlight out of the window of their car, then I would still measure the beam of light coming from their flashlight as moving at 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, and so would they. This is different to how most other objects behave in our universe, and it leads to some rather interesting consequences, some of which I've discussed on this channel, and of course there are lots of other brilliant YouTube videos on this topic as well. But an interesting question we can ask is, why are the theories of relativity built on this weird assumption, which back then there was no way to confirm? Well, that's because there were clues pointing to this being the case, and we'll be looking at one of those clues in this video. So. One such clue was from the theory of electromagnetism. This is the study of electric and magnetic fields, as well as electromagnetic waves. And quite frankly, this theory of electromagnetism was doing a fantastic job of explaining how electric fields and magnetic fields and electromagnetic waves worked. But one thing that it predicted was that electromagnetic waves should travel at a constant speed independent of who was measuring it, so any observer, regardless of what speed they were traveling at relative to anything else, the speed of light in the theory of electromagnetism was thought to be constant. Now that constant happened to be equal to this quantity here, 1 divided by the square root of epsilon naught mu naught. So let's take a look at what epsilon naught and mu naught actually are. But before we do, if you're enjoying this video so far, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Okay, so epsilon naught and mu naught are both properties of empty space or of a vacuum. Epsilon naught is often known as the vacuum permittivity and mu naught is often known as the vacuum permeability. Let's focus on epsilon naught first. Epsilon naught is a measure of how well electric fields can permeate through empty space. Now that idea is nice to imagine, but it's not very practical mathematically. So another way to think about this is the following. Here is the equation that tells us the electric force exerted by two charged particles on each other if the charges on these particles are q1 and q2, and they're separated by a distance r in a vacuum. This is known as Coulomb's law, but one thing we can ask is why do these particular charges exert this exact force? Why is it not slightly stronger or slightly weaker even for these exact charges, this exact same distance apart from each other. Well, one way to think about it is that the size of this force is determined by epsilon naught. If this was any bigger, the force would be smaller. If epsilon naught was smaller, the force would be bigger. Epsilon naught is a property of the vacuum. And as it turns out, this is the value it happens to have in our universe. Similarly, mu naught, the permeability of free space, determines how magnetic fields behave in a vacuum. If we imagine two current carrying wires, each of which carries a current I, and they're separated by a distance R in a vacuum, then we can use this as a convenient way of understanding mu naught. This is because current carrying wires generate their own magnetic field, which in turn exerts a force on moving charges, such as the moving charges in the other wire. We can calculate the force exerted by the wires on each other per unit length. Let's say this is one unit length of wire, maybe one meter. Well then the force exerted is given by this expression here. As we can see, the force obviously depends on the currents within the wire as well as the distance between the wires, but it also depends on the permeability of free space. It is this parameter that determines the strength of a magnetic force in any given scenario. And so the speed of light, an electromagnetic wave, has something to do with the ability of electric and magnetic fields to permeate through empty space, through a vacuum. How appropriate, right? And it's worth noting, by the way, that this only applies in a vacuum. There is a slightly different equation for when we're talking about other media, such as air or water, and the speed of light does change in these other media. But the equation that we require for those scenarios is actually not much more complicated. All we have to do is to include something about the properties of the medium we're considering. And of course, when we happen to consider an electromagnetic wave traveling through air, then the difference in speeds between air and vacuum is not very big at all so much so that we can ignore the difference entirely, and we just treat it as traveling at the speed of light in vacuum. Unless, of course, we want to do some really high precision calculations. But so what we're seeing here is that the theory of electromagnetism predicted that the speed of light was a constant related to the properties of empty space. It had nothing to do with who was measuring it or how fast they were traveling. 
And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Just a short one for today. I quickly wanted to mention that I have some merch out now since some of you have been asking. It's based on a quantum dice design that I had really a lot of fun creating. Uh, if you'd like to support this channel by getting some merch, then please do check out the store tab on my channel page. As always, I really appreciate all of your support, all of your kind words and so on. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon.